And these are like the Sith archives. <laughs> Hole? No? Oh, is that- is that the one I came from? Maybe? I should check. Where does that go? Ah, this is a new different room. So the whole thing is hexagonal in shape, so it- or... It's symmetrical in shape, at least. No, it looks like looks like hexagonal is right. Uh, so it's a bit of a thing to figure out what it's all shaped like. Uh, okay, that's why I got turned around. I was like, I went through the door. I was like, how am I back at the original hallway? I probably went to a room like this, then to the side door into the chamber that overlooks the main area, then around to here, which is this circular-ish room that also has a window into the central chamber. It almost feels like some kind of proving grounds or something, right? Like, or like a way of settling disputes or competing or something. Like, you can suit up, you can do stuff, there's like an overlord dude overlooking this spot, and there's like a, this is like a, a strategy chamber or something. And then there's just an open area here on the that you look down on, and another one you look down on over here. Like I don't know, it could be it could just be sports. It doesn't have to be like a d death combat or something. But it feels like all of this stuff is all designed to to control one side of the field, and this is all to look over the other side of the field. And then maybe the central barrier would go down. Like, look at that. Or it's a giant game of battleship. <laughs> We're making progress. I found a lot of these now. I gotta keep a close lookout around this place though, cause like that's I uh this is a this is a really big facility. And I just wandered into the exact room that has that in it. They put it here because this is here, huh? Cause this might teleport me somewhere else. Simpson. Don't mention anything about the upper area of the fortress in your uh, Garrison report. I don't want people wandering all over Teladon looking for that weird link stone. Sharper. The upper area of the fortress. Alright, well now I know about that, and I know that there's a... There's a... Link stone. Thanks, Sharper. Useful information. Analysis. Author. Simpson. Transcribed from voice recorder. Age. Grayson, uh, November 12th, 2001 to June 4th, 2002, multiple trips. Okay, one thing seems immediately obvious. This place was built for security. No one could ride a link anywhere in this place, or the next. It was obviously a maintainer facility of some kind, and it doesn't seem that it was for general guild members, but that... By that, I mean it was limited to at least the higher ranking members. As to how they got the first link written here, I don't know. Probably while it was under construction. It does seem pretty obvious that it's not going to happen again, unless something major happens to this place. I should say that Kodama has some theories about the age that have, been, that have held up so far. May have been a special forces of a sort for the maintainers. Started later, mid eight thousands, because somewhat of a re it became somewhat of a research and development arm for the maintainers guild. I don't know. Worth mentioning though, there are quite a few mentions of such groups in other docks Kodama has found, or at least seen. Entrance. To begin with, I'd wager that there is no one other than a high-ranking. Uh, I'd wager that none, that no one other than a high-ranking uh, government official or similar ever even made it to this room. That's just my guess, but it seems pretty sound. I don't think any school buddies or girlfriends dropped by to see their maintainer friend. The linking book we found was deep within the maintainer guild. I'm sure it was well guarded in its day. You can see right off the bat the entrance was extremely secure. Thick walls, one door, a high window, sniper, maybe. If you managed to get in with a bomb or something, 
it's not going to do any noticeable damage. I love the maintainer symbol on the floor and everywhere else you look. As though I might forget and wonder where I am. Waiting room. So, visitors are escorted into this little waiting room. There's a window on one side, almost like a ticket window. Maybe you turn in weapons or goods that aren't allowed. Maybe books. I'm sure they didn't want books in here. Yeah. Looks like mainly for books. This is another ticket window on the other side, although this one looks different. I'm pretty sure those are beetle cages on the other side. Beetles that sought out ink. Somebody was just telling me there are all kinds of references to them in the other docks. You didn't make it past this room with a book. So they had, they had like, sniffing dogs for books, but it was beetles that are attracted to ink. As well, the doors never open at the same time, so even if somebody... If somehow you make it out of the entrance room, you're still not going to make it past three mammoth doors out of the waiting area. Halls. Looks like the hall ran along the entire circumference of the building. There are plenty of rooms. I'll just try to hit them one at a time. First is an elevator, though. However, looks like it's only down. Wonder if it was always that way. More security, I guess. Once you've made it into the halls, there is still nowhere to go. At least if they didn't want you going anywhere. Lockers. I would think that any books that were brought to the age were kept in the lockers. I'd imagine that some of the workers here, or frequent visitors, also kept some equipment. But I could be wrong about that. Looks like they kept some maintainer gear as well. Markers, helmets, etc. Seems a little out of place, honestly. Keys. Okay, things are becoming a little more clear now. Just had a long chat with Laxman and research some different docks over in the city that Nick had. Looks like the current condition I'm seeing was not the original condition. The key was a major development, not just for the guild, but also apparently for all citizens. Turns out they were just starting to hand out the keys to the public around the time of the fall. Nice timing. So it looks like they had done some renovations in order to facilitate the mass amounts of visitors that would be coming in order to retrieve keys. Turns out my little girlfriend analogy was pretty much completely wrong. Girlfriends and more were going to start coming here. At least to the open sections. Kodama corrected me. We've actually found multiple books in the neighborhoods, as well as the guarded maintainer book I mentioned earlier. Whoops. So, visitors come in, walk through the doors, beetles check for books, and then they walk to down the hall into the key room. Get a key, and link out. Guards were probably at the up elevator, which is just behind the room. But they did happen to bring in illegal items. They get them back from the other side of the locker room, and off they go back home with their new shiny key. Makes more sense as to why the maintainer paraphernalia was in the locker rooms, too. Probably a little display type thing for all the visitors. Impress them. Warehouse. Quite a bit of goodies in here. All of which I'm sure most visitors never saw. Pretty bad cave-in from the floor above, although Engberg says structurally the place seems alright. He's doing more detailed inspections soon. Looks like most of these crates are filled with key maintenance type equipment as well as a variety of spare parts, etc. I don't know. Laxman will have to give you this place a good inspection. I'm sure he'll love getting through it all. Beyond me, I know that. Beetle cages. Convenient cave in. Not sure how one is supposed to get in the beetle cages without it. No idea how they did it. Link, maybe. Regardless, pretty positive the cages were for beetles. Symbols in the front, and quite a bit of remnants in some of the dirtier cages. We'll have to clean those up. Wonder when they all died. Speaking of access, another question. How'd they get to the second floor? Elevators skip the middle floor. More security, I suppose. Right, the floor I got up to only was accessible via uh, platforming from crumbled destroyed objects, and I got up, and then the elevator went straight here. Although the front elevator was not usable. 
I don't know. Second floor. Destruction was a little more substantial than I thought. Looks like it tore out a section of the outer wall, even. I'm gonna get out of here until Engberg can come back again. Been a few days, but I'm back. I'm no expert, so I guess I have to trust Engberg, but he says this whole thing is one of the most solid, heavy pieces of construction he's ever seen. It's safe, he assures me. If I die here and someone retrieves this recording, please sue him for me. Second floor looks similar to the first. Outer hall and a number of rooms. Have to remember that very few people probably ever walked these halls. There is no access via elevators, stairs, anything to get here. I assume it had to be done via a linking book, which is probably somewhere in the city. I suppose there could be a way to stop those elevators on the middle floor, but I doubt it. Regardless, this floor was extremely secure. Book access only, I'm guessing. If I were to take a guess about how they just get the elevator stopped there, if it is possible, it might be your credentials that can determine it. If you you have to you need a key in order to use the elevator, but if you have the key they're giving out publicly, then you're you know part of the public. So you probably, or, but if you have a security key, you might be able to go on the, on the second floor, and so on. Who knows? Guard lounge. Next to the observation room. At least that's what I assume it was. Is what it looks like. A, a guard lounge. Looks like they stayed here for long amounts of time. There are beds in here, as well as couches. I assume these guys manned the window and observation post while visitors were coming in. Guard lockers. More lockers. Similar to the set downstairs, although these are manned with some heavy equipment. I'm sure Watson will want to see the stuff and keep it locked up well. In fact, I'm not even going to go into detail about it here. Laxman can write all about the stuff in a later report. I will say I didn't know that Denis had all these kinds of technology. Gear room. Now I see why this floor was so secure. Looks like the whole power structure for this building is here. Amazing construction. The entire building looks to have been powered by some underground water source that caused it to turn. They implemented a gear that would grab onto the teeth of the ground in outside and provide the, them a power source as well. Talk about killing two giant birds with one stone. Pretty amazing. Power looks somewhat complicated. Seems as though there were at least occasions that power was turned off, as there are obviously controls to do that and start it again. I'm heading to the top. Top. Wow. I thought this building was big. The main portion's absolutely giant and rotating too, of course. I'm overcome with the amount of work put into this place just for security. It's everywhere. Almost comical picturing government officials walking the same paths I am. Amazing. To get to the other side, looks like one had to walk across the bridge to the rock pinnacle. The first place since we're, we've are we arrived that we're able to save a link. And it's not big. And there's a massive structure facing you, if you did. Pretty funny to try and picture an army and invading, all of them bunching up at the stone waiting for the bridges to rotate. What the? My gosh. The creatures. These things are something out of a horror movie. I've been up here a little while, and I don't see them often, but when I do, they're scaring me to death. I'm beginning to understand the fences and structures a little better. Perhaps some of them were designed to keep creatures out more than to keep visitors in. Don't hang out in these woods, unless you have a big gun. Another bridge to reach the main portion of this place. More security. I will say that the platform between the bridges seems to have eroded. At one time, crossing the bridges was probably a security feature to ensure manageable groups would approach the larger building one at a time. But I would wager it was erosion. Uh, 
I would wager it was still a lot easier than it is now. The erosion to the platform between the bridges has made it a little tougher. I suppose the maintainers would like it even more in its current condition. Mud rooms. I'm not sure what to call these things, but they remind me of mud rooms, so I'll call them that. If I guess I could I could explain what those are a bit actually. Uh, it's like a side room at the entrance of a building. Like I'll, I I the, I've seen some cabins in the hills that have those, those kinds of things where like you go into the front door of the cabin and you go directly into like you know the front room of like a normal house. But there's also like a left door that's also exposed to the outside, and you can go into that room, and then. From that room, you can open another door that goes into the main cabin. That's actually right next to the door, that you, the front door that you other, otherwise had access to. So when you're inside the house looking at the front door, there's two front doors that lead to two different places. One directly outside and one to the mud room. Which kind of it suffices as what you'd expect. It's, just, it's like a dirty room. It's got... You don't you really have carpet. You have like a... You have more dirt-friendly flooring and stuff like that, and you keep, like, uh, hardware and so on. For us, it was snowshoes, sleds, skis, and stuff like that, because we were up in the mountains. Uh, and then, you know, shovels, other things that are useful for snow, stuff like that. It's a place you could walk into with all your gear and then get all your gear off before you walked into the main house and tracked like snow and mud and dirt into it and so on. And also you could dump off all the heavy weird shit that you don't really want to take in the house. Not much here. Looks like each bridge has a mud room attached to it with another group of doors, etc. There doesn't seem to be any kind of decompression or decontamination that went on here. Really, they seem to be nothing more than another spot for another set of doors. Another secure location. Training Center. I was going to go through each of the rooms here, but after making a quick overview, I think I'm just... I'm just... I'll just start with the entire thing. There are three types of rooms in this building. Two of each kind. There is a control room, one purple and one yellow. A display room one purple and one yellow, then a conference room, though these aren't colored. I assume there is one for each team. The entire building seems to be centered on the massive wall in the middle. The control rooms control the wall. The display rooms display the uniforms that were worn in the wall, I presume. And the conference rooms allow the government visitors and high-ranking officials to confer about their training on the wall, see? The control rooms first. I'm not going to go into controls for the wall in this dock. I'll let Laxman do that at some other time. Regardless, the panel here obviously controls the wall. The wall was used for training as well as testing of various suits. I believe the central room can get pretty hot, cold, smoky, or anything else I can imagine pretty quickly. It was a competition. Whoever could get to the top was the quickest. Teams would set up the obstacles and members would race. There's a side tunnel that provides access to the display rooms from the control room. Display rooms. Not sure that these were originally display rooms, or maybe they were. Either way, there are quite a few old maintainer suits in here. There's also the latest maintainer suit, or skin, here. I guess I should say the machine to put on the latest maintainer suit is in here. Now that we've had some time to look at this, it's incredible. We're talking about a suit that was skin tight and had linking abilities, etc. built in. Very high tech as far as maintainer suits go. Very impressive. The maintainer would fall down the chute, and while traveling, to the interior room slash the wall, the suit would be placed on him. I'm begging to try this thing, but DRC is insistent that no one does. Oopsie. <laughs> Laxman already had someone on it trying to figure out more. I'm first when they do. I think these rooms could basically be described as team locker rooms. Conference rooms. Well, I guess these rooms were where the bigwigs sat down and talked about their maintainers. Obviously, they 
are set up to watch the wall, and there are displays that show the patterns being built and played on the wall. We'll never know, but I can see the guild masters in here watching their teams compete, preparing to send them out to some radioactive fireball age to see if their new suits can stand the elements. Upper portions. I'm not going up now, but we do know the upper portions were used as prison cells. Typical Dini technology. They had a single linking book that went to all the cells. Since the building was always rotating, a very complicated linking apparatus and timing mechanism was associated with the book. The timing of the link would determine which cell the person linked to. Apparently it was very tight. Speaking of linking, this entire building is rotating as well. It seems that most visitors came on the path from the wall, although there were also books directly to the building. There had to be. It seems that many of them also used the timing mechanism to link into the specific rooms. Looks like another new feature designed and built by these guys. One of many, I'm sure. I'm just wondering where the main research labs were. Or better yet, where did everyone sleep? Or eat? I like this guy. He is very thorough. Also, said a lot of the things that I already said and thought a lot of things that I would think. So that's fun. Yeah, he kind of contextualizes what the game's meant to be. You're going around and investigating things and trying to figure out what the hell all the stuff you're looking at means. And then another person shares their findings when you find their journal. And they know a lot more than you do because they actually have been researching a bunch of different things and not just this one spot. So yeah, I was right to think that this is all like teams or something. Cool. Can I jump on this? Let me jump up top. Yeah! Nope. Not quite. Yeah, this does seem like a conference room. I should keep an eye out in case there's another one of those. But maybe not. I also just need to keep an eye out to figure out where this, how to explore this place and navigate it. Probably like another floor or something. Uh, I'm not ready to go back outside yet. But when I do go back outside, I can hang out on that thing and maybe go end up somewhere else, ultimately? Like, maybe there's a spot where the, uh, another space to jump off towards, besides the one I came from. Easy to get turned around in here. Hmm. Yeah. They said yellow and purple, right? Yeah, this is clearly a different color. And this does look like some kind of weird suit you would... Like, you have to go after different pot like, you, it could be like a targeting thing, you target different spots on it and it lights up or something. Or this could actually be another suit, like the one I'm wearing, but for a different team. I mean, not a different team, but a different role on the team. Seems they were testing the suits and also competing the teams against each other. I'm not sure what these pods do. Or what these do, for that matter. What does the wall do? Is it a grid of things that light up to show you how they're performing in the battle that's happening on a different location? Oh, and you said that whoever gets to the top of the wall wins. They're supposed to climb the wall? Is that what the implication I'm supposed to think? Why would they climb a vertical sheer wall? And why, why would that be the only thing in this room? Or is it first to the top? It could because... I'm still thinking this might be a display of some sort that tells you how things are going, like battleship style-ish or whatever. And when they say first to the top, they might, might mean that like they're trying to go from point A to point B, and that, that's that's on the top of the display. But they're, it's representing something else, and not just them literally climbing a wall. Because that, that offers more versatility, more breadth of meaning and uses. Whereas if all they're doing is running, climbing one wall, then that's a really boring use of an entire giant mega building. Just, this is the place where we keep the wall. That's all it is. A wall. That'd be an underutilization of the space.
And here's the yellow one. Ooh. A few other things are turned on here. You can see over here displays of the grid. Which makes sense because they're in a little bit of a shittier angle to look at these. So these are duplicate displays of the grid itself on the wall. Until I see it in action or something, it's hard to glean what it does exactly. But this might be a, another journal that helps explain. Is there another mark in here? I kind of figure not. Oh, shit. I hope I didn't miss one of those. I'll have to keep, I'll have to thoroughly look around just in case. That's just sitting in a chair. It's easy to miss. I'm thinking there's not another hand around here, because as far as I can tell, uh, each age seems to have a, something in the territory of like a kind of linear progression of point A to point B, of how do you get through it. And I think that you find seven uh, journeys along the way. It was a bit less like that the first time around when we were in uh, New Mexico. They were they set me up for this idea that I just have to find seven ones that are kind of just scattered around a map. Like, some of them had to be found in a certain order just because there was a, there was a progression to the zone, but some of them were just kind of around and kind of not even useful locations. Uh, so I kind of thought it was just like seven collectibles at that point, but now that I've seen this chapter and also the, the hydroelectric dam looking place that I went through or whatever it was, uh, at that point, now I'm thinking, oh, there's like, there's one of those hand prints, one of the journey things, per zone, basically. Because they're progression. You found the next building, you found the next puzzle element, you found the next, like, new concept, here's a hand thing. Did it kind of gates your progress a little bit, or uh, tracks your progress? So it'd be weird to find a second one in this floor of this building. There might be one like upstairs or downstairs if I get to go there or wherever I go next. That seems to be the pacing so far. Key. Base functions. Denis number three on the back side of all the devices. Three functions? There's certainly more than that. Three core functions. In any case, it's a convenient name. Key. Oh, they're calling them, they call them keys because it has, it looks like K-I. The number three. Okay. One. Nexus interface. The Nexus seems to be just an interpreter for the key data. Keys allow users to provide or decline book access to other keys. I think we can make this work for neighborhoods as well. Age names defined in the key appear in the nexus, or should. 2. Interpersonal communication. Obviously the most important function. Voice or text communication with other key users. Inter or intra-age. Doesn't seem to matter. 3. Image capture. Storage and transfer. A single button press captures an image and stores it within an appropriate age directory. Images can be sent to other keys as well as uploaded to to some imagers, depending on versions. Seems main servers coordinated this functionality. Might be tough to revive. Oh. Reference to this, the game being not online. Journal entry. Storage and transfer. Fairly simple. Write notes and store them. Again, server handles transfer journal key to key or key to imager. 5. Markers. The ability to drop and collect markers at the opponent's present location in an age. Layers of functionality here. Requires more research. Perhaps this feature could be tapped to help with the GZ problem. Interesting. I can drop markers? Hmm. 6. Doors. In this age, the key. Even at its most basic level, opens level 1 doors. Level 2 and level 3 doors require higher versions. There's much more variety to these devices than we first suspected. The dispenser is capable of handing out at least 5 versions and possibly more. Feature sets varies widely. There must have been a system to control and track these devices. Where? Imager built into the unit is surprisingly compact and efficient. 
uses the same blasted lattice compression system, for lack of a better word. I have to crack that. Powerful projection for something that fits on the top of a hand. Markers. Purpose. Perhaps a training tool for maintainers. Markers could be set up and recruits and or lower ranks run through the course. Interface. He's interact with markers in three ways. Team capture. Once all the markers are placed, there are two teams that can collect markers. Key registers the marker to a respective team. Marker can vanish after a time limit or after all have been uh, registered. Markers must be in same age. Test. Can markers be reset? Hold. Against two teams. Markers only vanish after a preset time limit has expired. Markers do not disappear upon being activated, although server keeps track of what team is holding it. Server summarizes I team holding most markers at the end of the time limit. Markers must be in the same age. Single capture. Only one individual key can register markers. Markers also carry text. Entire marker set can be sent via key to another key anywhere in the system. Markers can be placed in any age. Markers themselves seem identical to those produced by the Great Zero. In fact, I'm positive the same technology is being used, if not the Great Zero itself. It's possible the keys are communicating with the Zero itself and writing these marks anywhere they're registered. Problems with that theory? Maintainer markers, etc. Key registration. Key tracks of other keys on three levels. Intra age. Any other key within the age is logged and displayed. Key to key. Any individual key can be registered for specific tracking. As a result, no matter where the key is, journals, photos, etc. can be sent and, and communication can occur. Perhaps this was used for temporary or semi-permanent team missions. For our purposes, uh, friends list. Groups. The key also register recognizes groups, somehow related to the Nexus. Seems possible if properly configured the support neighborhood lists with this function. There are two support neighborhood lists with this function. Alright, so this it kind of seems like an in-universe explanation of all the online mechanics of the game that is, I'm playing, currently playing offline for the most part. But a few of them are relevant to me. Mainly the door opening and shit. I'm still not sure what's going on with this game. Or how it works. There must be like, they must go to another age, right? Or do they play here? I wonder if you could play the game. It feels like the implication might be that you can actually play said game, uh... Like, in the game, using your key. Like, you could do something that drops... Markers or something? Especially since these are like are those the three functions you were talking about, maybe? I'm wondering. I'm wondering if you could play this like this weird competitive sports game in the middle of mist, because that's just a weird thing to include in a mist game. Now there, where do you take me? We're in Smearville again. Where the sky is smeary. I think I'm not supposed to be able to see that so closely. That whole surface looks weird. Can I do anything here in Smearville? There's weird tents down there. That's not a very nice game, making a linking a book to nowhere. You guys like to do that, huh? All right. What do you do? I don't know 
what those mean. We'll see if, I don't know, maybe a convenient journal will explain them for me. <laughs> oh, I'm still in costume. That's neat. I might just stay that way. Definitely happy to be able to warp past the whole elevator and timing puzzle where you sometimes fall through the floor and so on. Let's go back out there, but let's go... Well, actually, this is my chance to check this room to see if there was a weird thing lying anywhere. Now the chairs don't seem to have anything on them. Well, it's good to know I probably didn't miss anything. Alright, I will now go clockwise, because I just went counterclockwise a moment ago. Just to be thorough. There could be some weird random detail where like a chunk of the environment's broken or something, or there's a weird hole somewhere or anything like that. So that's the entrance to the battle arena or whatever. Whatever you want to call that. I have arg I have most likely been everywhere now. I almost said arguably, but no. This should be the team. So this is the first place I went into. Yeah. And so that's the one I, I came in through. And so I guess this will take me right back to where I just was when I got trapped. I'm trying to remember if any of the single page lying around, like the ones that look, the ones that also look kind of garbagey, like they can, they're all incoherent looking, and like they look unfinished. I wonder if any of those have. I'm trying to remember if any of them have led me somewhere besides a dead end, so far, or if it's just a chance to look at a cool image. I don't know. But there it is. Yeah. It might have even been them testing whether or not they could even... They might have been testing whether or not they could even make a, a page in here. Because they, talk, they talked about it not working in a bunch of places. So maybe they're making them all over the place to see where they'd work. It's a trip figuring out what this is supposed to look like exactly. There's this weird texture on top. There's this stuff. It's all quilt-like. But this looks like paper. Like, do they cut it to size afterwards, I wonder? Oh, that's stone. It's on a slab of stone. I think those are like the more primitive handmade approaches to linking books or something like that. It's hard to be sure. I'd say the question right now is whether or not I can get to one of the other floors, I suppose. 